please welcome CEO and owner of B&B Finder, Eric Goldrayer, in discussion with Skipped Executive Editor and Founding Editor, Dennis Shaw. Okay, thank you. We're dabbing. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I was a little concerned. I found out you did a triathlon a couple of weeks ago. I thought if you pulled the hammy, this whole session might have been in jeopardy, <laughs> but you're here. I would have had to have actually run to pull a hammy. Oh. I think I'd probably, I'd probably end up walking. The whole oh, time. it was like that, huh? Yeah, no, it was, oh, okay. it was good. It was good. It's humid in Austin, but it's a great place. But it works. Who remembers the Marriott ad campaign of a few years ago? It pays to book direct. And it sort of worked. Uh, they put their you know, lower, lower loyalty rates on their, only on, their, on Marriott.com. They won some market share from the OTAs. So today we're going to talk about direct booking uh, in the short-term rental industry. There's no loyalty rates out there, but maybe it'll work anyway. So tell us about B&B Finder. So it's a third-party platform but it's all about direct bookings. It seems like a contradiction, so how does that work? Yeah, so it's, it's basically what, the, you know, the, the goal is is to create an OTA that is a book direct OTA. So the, the, the problem we're solving is a lot of what really Seth's presentation this morning, right? What are property managers frustrated with? What are consumers, travelers frustrated with? And property managers want to own that relationship with the guests. They don't right. want a third party to own it. They want to be the merchant of record. They want to be able to upsell, cross sell, side sell that potential guest. Uh, and we want them to be able to provide hospitality to the traveler. Mm -hmm. We feel that regardless of how good of a website or an app that you build, it can't replace or provide the level of hospitality that a professional host can. So at b, &B Finder, we only have professional hosts, whether they're innkeepers, they're boutique hoteliers, or they're property managers. And for the traveler, what we're trying to solve is what you saw Seth's top three things that our travelers are frustrated with, right? It's gotten expensive. So the cost, a lot of times when they, the reason that Carl and over two thirds of other travelers are showrooming on Airbnb and Verbo and, and using those OTAs as a search engine and then trying to right click, side click, you know, grab the, the name and search it directly to, to disintermediate the OTA is to save the money. Right. Because even if it's not a, and I, I would dis, yes, consumers are frustrated with hidden fees and mm -hmm. the lack of transparency, but I would say the bigger thing is they're frustrated with fees. Right. And our research shows that it's that call it 15 to 20 percent in additional fees that we've all seen when we've gone to book something right that uh, it adds up and so what we're doing is we're creating a book direct OTA where travelers can come to our site search find all of the listings from all of the different property managers that are on our platform right and then either book through us but we're capturing the data passing it securely through the API through the PMS to the property manager, they're the merchant of record. Right. So we're not forcing ourselves into that uh, process. Right. And we're giving the traveler the way to work with the property manager that they want. So right there next to the book it now is their phone number, their email address, a link to their website. So we feel the best way to bring hospitality to the industry is to save the travelers the money so they can travel more often or you know stay an extra night go for five nights instead of four nights for the right. same amount of money or you know upgrade to the ski and ski out or the lakeside or a bigger place or bring in a chef or get a ski instructor whatever you want to do with that money but our sort of premise is that you know life is about relationships friends and family right. and people unless they're traveling for work they're traveling to create memories with people that mean something to them. And so to the degree that we can enable those people, those travelers to have a better experience because we save them money and they can do more, we've checked that box. And the second thing we're solving for is sort of the unknown, which was in Seth's you know, data. Travelers want to know what they're getting. Uh, the, right. the analogy to me would be, I'm not a Starbucks fan. I don't like right. Starbucks. People like Starbucks because they know what they're going to get. So I looked on your website, 
and Airbnb shows the total price now up front except for taxes. Um, on your website, it just shows the, the nightly rate for one night up front. And then uh, you, uh, cleaning fees and other fees you find out after. Right? Not a few. So we're, it's, it's a great point. Um, we've spent the last, so BNB Finder as a website launched in 1998. It was a true bed and breakfast website, right? right. Bought it in 2019, rebuilt the tech stack, put the team back together. Um, we've spent the last really 12 months on supply. So, so the three legs of the stool are to, to create a marketplace, you have to have inventory, mm -hmm. right? We're not gonna be valuable to anyone if they wanna come to Austin. We've got 27 listings, right? right. So we've got like 500 now. Uh, still room to grow, but we've got enough that we can be valuable to a traveler. Uh, the second thing is, is you have to have a product that works. We've not really been focused on the website so much. We've been focused on inventory because we weren't going to go out and let the world know we existed because we didn't want travelers coming because we didn't have inventory. Right. Our site for the last 12 months has really been a site for those early adopters and those innovators that we're willing to put up with a few things because man, they can stay for five nights instead of four for the same price. Right. What we're in the middle of doing right now is exactly what I mentioned a minute ago, which is today, if you go to our site, roughly half the listings on our site, we're going to send you through to the property manager's website to complete right. the booking. It's a bad user experience. We know that. Um, now about half the listings, you go to book it, it's all going to happen on our site, just like you're on any other OTA. And then you pass the, the customer information to the... Uh, property manager. Right. And yeah. they do the customer service and stuff. That's right. So you bill it as um, vacation rentals without service fees. So what that really means is you s you're not paying a B&B finder service fee, but you're, play you know, you're paying cleaning fees and Absolutely. all the other fees that uh, the property manager might charge. Yeah. We say service fees, booking fees, pretty interchangeable. Right. Um, if the property manager charges a service fee, that service fee is going to exist on all the other OTAs and all the other channels, and it's going to exist right. on their direct website. Right. But the consumer might, for us. might be a little frustrated. Oh, I thought there was no service fees. And then they click over, and there's a service fee. They could be. And yeah. I think what will happen is they'll go and they'll compare the price on our site yeah. to the price on the other guys, and they'll say, oh, my gosh, that's, you guys are way less expensive. Right. And we're, you know, it becomes, right, less, less is more. Uh, the three rules are right in it at the company are people don't read, people don't read, people don't read. We got to be careful how much we try to explain. Mm -hmm. So you, you boil it down to, you know, no service fees and there's, you know, the little eye or whatever you mouse over it and it pops up and it explains no b, &B finder service fees. Right. And then you bill it as uh, no commissions for the um, property managers. So, That's right. So it's free to list. Any, free to list. Any property manager can list. But Not any, but most. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if you want higher visibility, you pay a subscription fee. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we're not like the rocket scientists in the room. This is uh, David Klaus did it, you know, with Vacation Rentals by Owner in 1995. He was the founder. Uh, right. We And he sold the home way 2006. Uh, we launched bedandbreakfast.com in 95. Uh, Rich Barton launched Expedia. You Terry know, it's Jones funny. Launched. Your job at, at uh, Bread and Breakfast. Dot com was we had that domain, by the way, bread and breakfast, because a lot of people do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk. Yeah, no, um, a lot of people distribute. What were you saying? No, but your job was to distribute the inventory to the OTAs, and now right. you're running a site. Stay away from the OTAs. Yeah, so um, not stay away. Right. I, I'm, I'm not going to, and, and we as a company don't tell property managers you should not be on the big OTAs. That right. would be foolish as a PM. If I was a PM, I'd be on all of them. What we're saying is we're here to help you build your direct business with zero risk. Right. Get on the site. If you want additional exposure, just like old school home away, old school vacation rentals by owner, bedworks.com. If you want more exposure, you can pay for that. And so the right. algorithm will say, how, how okay, much do you pay? It's hundred dollars or less per month. It starts at $20 a month and it goes up to hundred dollars a month right. per listing. Is there really a resurgence in direct bookings in the market? You know, um, a, lo a lot of people talk about direct bookings. It's, it's aspirational, but how many are really have? I think it's you know? I think it's aspirational because it's not easy. If you're yeah. an individual homeowner, it's next to impossible. If you're a PM, you know, and you've got to go out and you've got to have a great website and you've got to spend that money driving traffic, 
there's obviously a cost to do that. So you can't right. say that it's a direct booking has zero cost. Right. We're trying to say that you can with us because you can get on our site and not pay us anything. We're going to send you the reservation and everybody's happy. And our model is, is that the assumption is, is that there will be enough property managers that want to get more exposure, that will right. upgrade, that because we can keep our overhead low, because we're not the merchant of record, right. and we don't have fraud to deal with and support to deal with, property managers already have that. Why would right. we stand up a huge team of people to add another cost structure to pass on to the traveler? Right. And we all know what happens. Companies can say that they don't charge the consumer a service fee or a booking fee, but what does the PM do if they have to pay 8% or 15%? Right. They typically raise the rates, which causes disintermediation because then the traveler is going to do the research to find the PM directly and they're going to book directly outside of the channel. Right. So the problem for like an individual owner to, to get direct bookings is they don't have the marketing resources to actually do it. You're a startup. Where, do you, where are you getting the eyeballs from? What are your resources to get the direct bookings? To get to it's attract, a great question and attract demand. You know, my, my high level answer would be today we're not. Mm -hmm. Our traffic is, is nothing. Some candor here. Yeah, no, there, our traffic today, we've not focused. Yeah. You, you have to have a great website yep. and or app, and you have to have a good inventory before it makes sense to go do anything really on building the third leg of the stool, which is the demand side. Right. Right, the supply side, the demand side, and then the, the product in the middle. I feel like, you know, 12 months in, we're right at 100,000 listings in primarily the United States. Mm -hmm. We've been approached by... Uh, one of the largest uh, property managers in Europe wanting to get on. We, we're not ready for Europe. That'll okay. probably be Q1 of next year, mm -hmm. hopefully. You have some big uh, property managers from the U.S.? Uh, we do. We're, I saw you have Red Awning. We've got Red Awning. Mm -hmm. uh, Evolve should be live uh, any day. Mm -hmm. um, and we've got... Uh, Evolve, M hurry it up, okay? Yeah, yeah. No, we, okay. we've, 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 they're great. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, it's, it's we should be uh, accretive to uh, and evolve just as much as we are to a four listing mm -hmm. property manager. Aren't you training, you know, from a property manager cons perspective and they're trying to get direct bookings, aren't you training them, training guests to do the wrong thing? They, they, they have to go to you, to get a third party site to get the direct booking. Well, I don't- I, Instead the, of going the, yeah, the, direct, the, direct, the, direct. <laughs> <laughs> the way I would look at yeah. it is, if the consumer is seeing, I've got, you know, OTA 1, OTA 2, OTA 3, and BNB Finder, and BNB Finder is going to save me 15 to 20%, and I don't know the PMs in this new market that I'm going to, right. I can either go spend an hour or two uh, doing a Google search for each individual property management company and re-entering my search every single time to find the properties that meet my needs, or they can come to someone like us find all the properties in one place or the majority of them as we grow. Right. And then if they want to book it online, great. But if they want to call them and talk to them, hey, here's their number, click it, right. it's going to call. You're not hiding it. No, we're not hiding it. We're trying to, I mean, that's the best level of hospitality that there is in our opinion. Right. So um, you're basically trying to be do, doing something similar to home to go uh, in Germany, a pre pretty similar model. So are you, they're a public company. You're trying to be the home to go of North America? No, I would say home to go is more of a meta site, right? Mm -hmm. Home to go has well, they listings. Still, they do a lot of facilitated bookings also. Yeah, but as a traveler, if you go there, yeah. right, you're going to have fees. They're right. not all no service fees. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're not all professional hosts mm -hmm. that have been vetted. So you, you're not solving the three biggest things that were on the slide this morning about what travelers are concerned about. Okay. And we will. I got a no good audience question here. Sometimes, OT, uh, sometimes OTA startups go against their initial promise and start charging standard commissions at some point. How do you resist? Yeah, that's, a, that's a, a fair question. I mean, I would say I'd be the dumbest guy in New York City if I tried to compete with a commission product against the entrenched players. Mm -hmm. Because the PMs are going to raise their rates by that same amount, just like they do on the channel. I'm no longer providing value to the traveler and the model falls apart. I've got to scale my costs, the whole thing. Just similarly, I think it would be hard for uh, the entrenched players to, to go after our model. 
Mm -hmm. you, you, can't, you can't be a, a hundred plus billion or $10 billion company, change your model and not really take a hit. So when your salespeople go to uh, a property manager to pitch B&B &B Finder, what is the reason, what is the most common reason you get that they don't want to sign up? Is it that you don't have the, you don't have the, the guess, you don't have the demand, or, or what is it? I think that's because a fair one. Because otherwise it's a... No, that's a fair one. Okay. Um, most of the ones that we do talk to come on. Okay. Right, but they're self-selecting. So what's the reason the ones that we don't get to talk to don't come on? We don't know because they don't talk to us. Uh, but... Um, I would say it's they're not seeing that we have the demand yet. They want to wait. Right. It's fair. Um, and the other one would, would be, gosh, we're a property manager. They're, it's like innkeepers. They're busy. They're like doing this, right? Right. Kicking it. I mean, they've got a lot going on. So uh, they have, this, they have this, uh, this perception because of the existing OTAs in the market that it's going to be a total shit show to onboard their listings onto our site, and it's right. going to take weeks or months. And the truth is, is because we've got APIs with the top dozen PMSs in the industry, and we got another six in the queue, we, we can get a PM live in like under an hour. We just need the keys. Evolve. It only takes an hour. Come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a question from, I can't read the name. Oh, Jared. Uh, love the concept. How do you plan to scale the demand side? Yeah. Um, you know, no silver bullet in demand. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we did a, back in my bedmarkets.com days, we would do quarterly surveys. We did our first survey at BNB Finder uh, in February, so it's about time for our next one. One of the questions that we asked, 681 travelers replied to this thing, 25 years of age or older, had stayed in a vacation rental in the last uh, 12 months. We asked if you were aware of a site like Airbnb or Verbo that didn't charge service fees, would you use it? Almost two thirds said they were highly likely to use it, 61%. Mm -hmm. And another almost third, 30% said they were likely. So more than nine in 10 people are saying that if we knew of a site like Airbnb or Verbo that didn't charge service fees, we, we would use it. We hope what that means is when you look at all the negative press around whether it's hidden fees or service fees, ticket master, resort fees, booking fees, gratuity. I mean, that whole, if, if we can come in and, and ride that wave to just create awareness. I mean, it's obviously gonna take PPC and SEO and social and you know all of the standard things that all of us know about. There's no magic trick. Well, what we hope is that because travel is sexy mm -hmm. and everybody's like, oh, you know, you, you, you go have a drink with someone you hadn't seen in a month. Oh, what are you doing this summer? Oh, well, we're going to go, you know, stay at this vacation room, blah, blah, blah. Oh, have you heard of B&B Finder? So we're hoping word of mouth is big for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we think once we do start going out to the traveler side of the marketplace um, and we show them what we've seen, mm -hmm. the savings can be, it will be, I, I hate to use viral, but it will be a big word of mouth thing, right? That's a relative, whether I'm going to book a, a ski and ski out property in Aspen for a week and I'm spending $70,000, not me personally, but metaphorically, right. 70 grand, then I'm gonna save $10,000. Whoa, if you're my son and he's that age where he and his new wife have a wedding to attend once a month, it feels like, right? So if they're going to Houston and they're staying in something that's $100 a night for two nights, saving 35, 40 bucks, well, that just like paid for their dinner, paid for the gas. Right. So I think, you know, I think the magic bullet for us is we are meeting what the market says they want. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it will be way easier for us than it would be for uh, Homes to Go or someone else to right. drive that demand. If you're uh, focusing exclusively on property managers, no individual hosts, aren't, aren't the guests losing out on a certain experience? Some guests can't be everything to everybody. Right. Um, you know, I would say, I would turn it around and say, uh, you know, what you saw in the data from Seth this morning wasn't that people were frustrated that they couldn't stay in every listing in a location. They wanted to know that, you know, the listing was real. It wasn't a ghost listing, right? Airbnb pulled 59,000 fake listings off their site in November, yeah. if I remember correctly. Um, they vetted 
the data is old, so I'm sure they're continuing. But at the, at the time that I read it, right. one and a half million of their 7.7 million listings. Travelers want to know that that if something goes wrong, one that it exists, property right. exists, two that it's as advertised, and three that if something goes wrong, there's someone there to fix it. Right. And like my son, who is a super host on Airbnb, he can't list on our site because right. he just was on his honeymoon. It's not fair. And he was gone for two weeks and he had two rentals. Who, right. Who's that guest gonna call when they're stuck outside his house? Right. We want the traveler to know that there's a professional behind each day. Got it. We're done, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs>